Before us stands this muscular creature, not an extraterrestrial, but a cockroach human mutant. In the blink of an eye, it snaps the woman's neck, leaving the man barely alive. Kamachi demands answers, questioning why it harmed his girlfriend, but the cockroach human ignores him. To the powerful creature, humans are like feeble ants, easily crushed underfoot. With a swift movement, the cockroach human effortlessly departs the scene, leaving Kamachi to bring his girlfriend's body back to the spaceship. Upon returning, Kamachi discovers that another teammate named Mariki has also fallen to the hands of the cockroach human. Panic ensues among the crew, as their mission was merely to eradicate cockroaches on Mars, unaware of encountering such terrifying creatures. Faced with Kamachi's inquiries, the captain reveals the true purpose of their Mars expedition. 500 years ago, with Earth's population growth and dwindling resources, humanity initiated a grand plan to colonize Mars. To make Mars habitable, they altered the planet's surface temperature and introduced moss and resilient cockroaches. However, centuries later, the cockroaches not only survived on Mars but also mutated under harsh conditions. Prior to their current mission, the Mars One spacecraft was sent for exploration but met a disastrous fate. To ensure the success of the colonization plan and eradicate the cockroach human threat, they dispatched the Mars Two spacecraft. The doctor in charge recruited convicts with promises of freedom and wealth upon completion. However, the crew was deceived about the true nature of the cockroaches they would face. They were misled by the doctor, who failed to disclose the terrifying nature of these creatures. At that moment, the holographic projection of the doctor suddenly appears on the spaceship. Kamachi, infuriated, throws a punch and demands to know why everyone was deceived. However, the doctor tells Kamachi not to be nervous because they were not unprepared for this mission. Before departure, the doctor genetically modified everyone by implanting insect DNA into their bodies. Injecting them with a cellular activator for insect cells would grant them temporary superpowers, sufficient to combat the cockroach human threat. The captain then transmits their respective abilities into their brains. However, due to individual differences in physiology, each person receives different insect abilities. The captain specifically warns everyone not to overdose unless absolutely necessary, as it could be life-threatening. Just as he finishes speaking, a cockroach human appears outside the spaceship. A seasoned former Special Forces soldier steps forward, ready to confront the creature. Everyone assumes he has the upper hand due to his calm demeanor. However, when he injects himself with the cellular activator, he transforms into a useless cockroach walker. Despite this setback, his combat prowess remains formidable, matching the ferocious cockroach human blow for blow. Additionally, the soldier's hands emit scorching flames, which he believes will incinerate the cockroach. However, the flames prove ineffective against the resilient creature, demonstrating the necessity of a robust physique to survive on Mars for centuries. As the soldier prepares for another attack, the cockroach human swiftly ends his life with a sudden strike, leaving everyone stunned. Yet, in the next moment, the cockroach human materializes inside the spaceship, repeatedly ramming its head against the glass in an attempt to breach the interior. The deputy captain reassures everyone not to panic, as the Mars 2's reinforced glass cannot be shattered. Unexpectedly, before the captain could finish speaking, the cockroach human broke through the window and swiftly dealt with two unlucky individuals. Upon seeing this, the captain immediately injected himself with the cellular activator and transformed into a bullet ant. True to its name, the bullet ant's punches were as fast as bullets, quickly dispatching one of the cockroach humans. However, their brief relief was shattered when the ship's radar detected more approaching cockroach humans rapidly. Faced with overwhelming numbers, they had no chance of victory, prompting the captain to order an immediate retreat to Earth. However, just as they attempted to take off, the ship's launch system malfunctioned. Their only option was to head to the nearby Mars 1 spaceship and transplant its system into Mars 2. Since the systems of both ships were identical, a successful transplant would enable them to launch again. The captain decided to stay behind to hold off the cockroach army, while the deputy captain led the team to Mars 1. Ichiro also chose to remain and fight alongside the captain. Before departing, Kamachi bid farewell to his girlfriend Nana's body, only to discover a strange tentacle growing from her head. Soon, everyone boarded the space car, where Tezuka's ability proved invaluable. He injected himself with the cellular activator, and a tube immediately extended from his mouth like a frog's tongue. As the steel door opened, revealing hordes of cockroach humans outside, Tezuka prepared himself. His inflated cheeks resembled those of a toad, and a burst of flames erupted, 
propelling the vehicle forward like a rocket launcher. Disregarding the swarms of cockroach humans, the space car surged towards its destination at a speed of 1,000 km per hour. Tezuka, as it turned out, was a hidden winged insect, capable of emitting gas from its tail to escape danger at breakneck speeds. Under his continuous output, the space car rapidly approached its destination, leaving the two women in awe of the remarkable uncle's abilities. Soon, a new crisis emerged, a massive wall loomed ahead, resembling an onrushing tsunami. However, upon closer inspection, something seemed amiss. As the camera zoomed in, they discovered it was actually a tsunami composed of countless cockroach humans. With no other option, they braced themselves and charged forward. Whether they'd make it depended solely on Tezuka. As the spacecraft plunged into the sea of cockroach humans, countless limbs and appendages pummeled the windshield. Despite Tezuka enduring numerous hardships, his relentless determination eventually propelled the spacecraft out of the swarm. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. After a brief respite, Tezuka continued to exert himself. However, when the deputy captain glanced ahead, his smile vanished instantly. Another colossal wave of cockroach humans surged towards them. Tezuka wouldn't last through this one. To provide cover for him, the two women had no choice but to transform. With their sturdy exoskeletons and formidable pincers, they were adept at defense. As the approaching wave drew nearer, Tezuka unleashed all his firepower, while the women assumed defensive positions. Despite their efforts, the impact was too great. The spacecraft flipped over as it emerged from the swarm, throwing all three occupants out. Those inside lost consciousness due to the immense force. Fortunately, before the cockroach humans reached them, the spacecraft entered autopilot mode and carried them away. However, the remaining three were left in dire straits. The horde of cockroach humans closed in, and having exhausted much of their strength, the trio could only resign themselves to their fate as lambs to the slaughter. The two women were taken first, their demise witnessed by Tezuka, who summoned his last ounce of strength to rise to his feet. Yet, even he couldn't escape the clutches of death. On board the Mars 2 spacecraft, the captain and Ichiro found themselves in a bitter struggle. After luring most of the cockroach humans into the spacecraft, the captain ordered Ichiro to close the ship's protective shield. They expelled all the oxygen, attempting to kill the cockroach humans inside in a mutual destruction scenario. As the oxygen levels plummeted, the cockroach humans became groggy, their combat abilities severely diminished. The captain could dispatch them with a single punch. However, once all the cockroach humans were eliminated, both of them lost consciousness due to oxygen deprivation. Meanwhile, on the Mars One spacecraft, the crew members who had regained consciousness found that the ship's systems were also malfunctioning. Suddenly, gunshots rang out from outside. The two guards at the door were killed by the cockroach humans before they could transform. When the three survivors emerged, they discovered the lifeless bodies of their comrades. They never expected the cockroach humans to wield firearms. In this dire situation, Kamachi had no choice but to transform. He became the most formidable of insects, a hornet. With his venomous stingers, he could take down a robust cockroach human with a single strike. Witnessing Kamachi's prowess, Mudo couldn't resist injecting the serum into his own body. He transformed into a desert locust, possessing incredibly developed hind legs that could leap over ten-story buildings effortlessly. Conversely, the deputy captain transformed into a mantis. Her razor-sharp hands sliced through cockroach humans like cutting through vegetables. With their combined efforts, they swiftly dispatched a dozen cockroach humans. Meanwhile, on the Mars 2 spacecraft, the oxygen supply system was gradually restoring. However, the barely conscious captain discovered another cockroach human inside the ship, aiming a gun at him. Just as the captain was puzzled, the body of the cockroach human was suddenly split open, revealing none other than Mariki, who had died at the beginning. Mariki was a flat-headed mud wasp, and her venomous sting had a unique ability to control the cockroach human's brain, turning them into her puppets. She had used this trick earlier to control a cockroach human and survive. It turned out Mariki's mission on Mars wasn't just about exterminating cockroaches, she was secretly tasked by the doctor to bring back a cockroach egg to Earth. Since the captain disagreed with the plan, Mariki had no choice but to shoot him. Even Ichiro lying beside her was her accomplice. Mariki poured a cup of water over Ichiro's body, and within seconds, Ichiro revived. He was a dormant mosquito, possessing an almost invincible survival skill. Once in this state, 
whether submerged in boiling water for two and a half minutes or exposed to temperatures of over minus 200 degrees Celsius, or even in a vacuum, it wouldn't die. Just a cup of water could fully revive it. The spaceship's takeoff system had no malfunction, it was all Ichiro's doing. Both of them aimed to bring the cockroach egg back to Earth. Now that the cockroach egg was on board the ship, all they needed to do was restart the spaceship and return to Earth. Meanwhile, as Kamichi and the other two were preparing to return to Mars too, they heard the roar of engines from afar. Then, a drone appeared before them. It was controlled by the doctor, who had been secretly observing them all along. As their plan seemed on the brink of success, the doctor spilled all the truth. It turned out that although Mars 1 was lost, the escape pod had returned to Earth, bringing back a cockroach human's head. They used this head to develop various concoctions blending insect DNA with human DNA. However, since the technology was still immature, they initiated the interstellar journey of Mars 2. Ostensibly to exterminate cockroaches, it was actually to test the crew's combat data and bring cockroach eggs back to Earth. Only with cockroach eggs could their research make breakthroughs and create more perfect insect-human hybrids. Then they would have a super army rivaling nuclear weapons. Kamachi, now aware of everything, wished to return to Earth immediately and take revenge on the doctor. However, without any means of transportation, they couldn't reach there before the spaceship took off. Meanwhile, Mariki and Ichiro were preparing to depart when they suddenly noticed movement in the cockroach egg. To their surprise, the cockroaches inside had hatched prematurely, as twins. The newborn siblings emerged from their shells in a peculiar manner. Although Mariki was somewhat astonished, she remained composed. Her ability was to control others' brains. As the two cockroaches stood up, Mariki swiftly injected herself with a concoction and dashed over, intending to control their minds. But to her shock, the cockroaches didn't obey her commands. Instead, they killed her on the spot. It was evident that the siblings were extraordinary and had evolved once again. As the spaceship ascended, the siblings emitted strange cries, seemingly calling for help from their ground comrades. To everyone's surprise, the cockroaches that heard the cries immediately evolved wings and transformed into flying cockroaches, swarming towards the airborne spaceship. Before long, the entire ship was overrun by flying cockroaches. Unable to bear the weight, it was forcibly pulled downward. Inside, Ichiro barely had time to inject the concoction for resistance before being kicked out by the younger sibling, falling unconscious once again. With the increasing number of cockroach people, the spaceship fell precisely at the location where Kamachi and the others were. This clearly exceeded the doctor's expectations. Kamachi, along with the other two, barely escaped a disaster only to be surrounded by a large number of cockroach people led by the siblings. A major battle seemed inevitable. As the opponents approached, the trio swiftly injected themselves with the concoction. Ordinary cockroach people were no match for them, but the siblings were different. With distinctive features on their foreheads, they became the leaders of the cockroach army. Soon, the younger siblings were subdued. Kamachi attempted to ambush the elder sibling but was left bewildered by a punch. Clearly, these two cockroaches were even more formidable, closely resembling human movements. At that moment, the younger sibling launched an attack on Mudo. The vice captain intervened but became the first to receive a beating. The death of his comrade unleashed Mudo's full fury. Ignoring the danger to his life, he injected himself with the concoction again. Not only did his appearance change, but his strength also increased significantly. He effortlessly dealt with several younger siblings, but was not satisfied. With the injection of a third dose, Mudo unexpectedly sprouted wings, evolving to a new level. The cockroaches began flapping their wings, flying towards Mudo in the air. A fierce aerial battle ensued, with Mudo grabbing a cockroach person and transforming into an unstoppable whirlwind, quickly gaining the upper hand. However, due to the side effects of the concoction, Mudo's body reacted adversely and he was sent flying by a hammer-wielding cockroach person. Despite Kamachi's attempts to stop him, Mudo continued injecting himself with the fourth and fifth doses. He then launched a rapid attack on the younger sibling, unexpectedly defeating him. Witnessing his brother's defeat, the elder sibling and the cockroaches displayed expressions of fear. However, Mudo had exhausted his fighting ability. When the cockroaches sought revenge on the younger sibling, Kamachi intervened. Mudo, now transformed into a grasshopper, could no longer revert to human form. Enraged, Kamachi charged at the elder sibling, 
but proved to be no match and had his poison stingers broken. Despite landing a punch, it had no effect. The elder sibling effortlessly kicked Kamachi away. Just as the elder sibling prepared to strike the final blow, his fist halted mid-air. A luminous figure appeared in the sky, it was Nanao, the one whose neck was twisted at the beginning. Her ability was that of a butterfly, allowing her to reincarnate after death. Fluttering her wings, Nanao began sprinkling scales from above. The cockroaches looked puzzled, but Mudo and Kamachi sensed trouble. Nanao intended to trigger a massive dust explosion using the scales, essentially planning to self-destruct. Learning the truth, Kamachi vehemently disagreed. After all, he still wanted to return to Earth with his girlfriend. Driven by his love for her, he evolved wings and flew towards Nanao. However, just before he reached her, a cockroach picked up a weapon and fired at the two in the air. This move, I dare say, was the ultimate betrayal, successfully leading to the demise of their own teammates. As flames were about to engulf Kamachi, Mudo, using his last ounce of strength, saved him. Kamachi could only watch helplessly as his girlfriend perished in the inferno. After a violent explosion, the two plummeted from above. When Kamachi regained consciousness, he had returned to human form. However, Mudo, due to excessive use of the potion, soon succumbed to his injuries. Surprisingly, the elder sibling and a few cockroach people were still alive. Yet, the elder sibling had reached his limit. Kamachi chose not to use his abilities and simply knocked him out with a punch. Despite the elder sibling lying on the ground, Kamachi spared his life, realizing that Dr. Mori was the real culprit. Upon returning to the spaceship, Kamachi discovered that Ichiro had also survived. It turned out that the spilled water had inadvertently saved him. At this point, neither Ichiro nor Kamachi intended to serve Dr. Mori any longer. They decided to temporarily spare him, focusing on exposing the truth of what had happened. As they boarded the escape pod, heading towards Earth, the ground-based cockroach people wanted to pursue them. However, the elder sibling intervened. Having evolved intelligence, perhaps they never wanted to engage in conflict with humans but only sought to protect their home and companions.